Merry Christmas. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. It is good to be with you on this Christmas, first Christmas Sunday, as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. I want to especially thank John Thomas and Amanda, who continue to push through uh, this season, which is uh, a very busy season for our musicians. So thank you all. And uh, to invite those of you who are here, as well as those uh, who are watching online, to join us uh, for a little Christmas caroling. We're going to go to the Dominion first and then make a couple other stops. If you're able to go tell it on the mountain or uh, on Hicks and Pike with us. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, we are opting for the guitar and we're going to uh, travel around with the guitar and we have bells for people who want to uh, ring bells as we go and uh, share the good news. Uh, next Sunday we have a lessons and carol service and that is at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary. Um, and uh, I, again, um, welcome you on behalf of the session of Rivermont Presbyterian Church uh, and to those who are worshiping online around the world. This is actually a time where the streaming thing is nice because our members are spread near and far, and I got messages from Costa Rica, South Carolina, and Germany when I got home from the Christmas Eve service thanking us, uh, you all, for a lovely service. Let's open with prayer. Oh God, we give you thanks for every day is a gift. We give you thanks on this day, especially as we remember the gift of the Christ child. The gift of a Christian family. Gifts of a light that continues to shine brightly. Might our worship glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 6 through 14. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. 
This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Has come a light in the darkness, love shines forth in the Bethlehem skies. See, all heaven has come to proclaim it. Hear how their song of joy arises, love, love, born unto you, a Savior, love. Love, glory to God on high. Love has come and never will leave us. Love is life everlasting and free. Love is Jesus within and among us. Love is the peace. Our hearts are seeking love, love, love is the gift of Christmas, love, love, praise to you, God on Let us pray. Love indeed has come to us. Your word comes to us by the power of the Spirit. Come by here and give us ears to hear, eyes to see the new thing you are doing in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. In high school, we had a conversation or the uh, notion of history was introduced uh, in that we could do nothing without it immediately becoming a part of history. Every act, every word that we speak uh, becomes something in the past. The present is fleeting, just like the future. Everything has just happened. And in some ways, our society devalues it the further and further away we get from it. Or that's history. Or that's ancient history. It becomes less and less relevant the further away it is. And sometimes we'll say, uh, you're tickled. You got into the scripture reading. You just, really yes. He wanted to read the, you know, he read right through. That was awesome. Um, sometimes we'll say something is a timeless truth, meaning that all other truths somehow lose uh, their truthfulness. 
I think the biggest challenge, or one of the biggest challenges to the faith is a renewed understanding or a new understanding of time. The dimension that is perhaps the hardest to explain, a timelessness uh, where there is no beginning and no ending. When people are fearful of second coming or of loved ones that have passed and that they're uh, in some sort of limbo state or that they're alone, I try to remind them that, that time is not in this chronos time that we mark here on earth. That that dimension is this fluid sphere, hard to imagine, maybe something more like energy that is always interconnected and happening at once. The theological concepts of eminence and transcendent are related to a perspective of time that on the one hand celebrates eternity, the eternal Father, everlasting from everlasting, and on the other hand, the nearness in the presence of God right here and now, each moment so much that it will always be present. It is the one thing that can remain present all the time and never become history. Transcendent, cosmic, before time and forever, ever expanding like the universe and yet imminent. Imminent is to dwell here and now. That is the God with us and the God above us. That is the beauty of Christmas is that it happened yesterday. Just yesterday we had Christmas Day, but now it's happening again every day because God is imminent here with you. It is the one thing that I would say remains a constant, the only constant, the only thing that is always present. That God, that God with us is also that constant love. That love for you, Jojo, never, never wanes or changes. It's just always right there holding you. Never changing. Constant. And it's the great I am who spoke creation into being. The Alpha and the Omega. God is not God unless God becomes present to us. That is, this God that is just out there and not present it is not the God we worship. And Jesus would not be Jesus the Lord if he was limited to a specific time in history. It's a great paradox of eminence and transcendence. And for me, it's what makes the Incarnation so beautiful. For someone where it's not such a leap to dwell among us, it can be nice, a visit. For, for the transcendent, which is what we know God to be, to become imminent is how we know God. Near, present and with us. That's good news, my friends. Merry Christmas.
that in thy dark streets shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. O holy child, And to us we pray, cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings. want to invite you to share any joys or concerns to include in the prayers of the people. Any thanksgivings, concerns, people we should be praying for? Yes, Caroline. Prayers for Heather. Thank you. Yes, Elder Emerita Jane Lupton. Okay, yes, uh, for uh, Jane's friend Mary, who is hospitalized right now with shingles, correct? Okay. Yes. Thanks be to God. The, uh, the friend of you, her name's Sarah, and she had twins. And she's a twin. Two girls, boy and girl, two boys. Well, there you go. It's, a, it's hope for the world right there. <laughs> we'll bring them together when we, or unless those, those twins are just. No, I'm just kidding. Any other, uh, I'll take confessions or things we need to repent about as well. Alden. Yes, we're thankful to have our, all of our girls home for Christmas. And we pray for safe traveling for Charlotte. And she went home to California last night. And Karen and Alicia and Lydia. It was good. It was good to see. Uh, I got to see Alicia on Christmas Eve. That was fantastic. Okay. All right. Let's pray. Oh God, your angels continue to sing to the glory of your name, to announce that you are the Prince of Peace. Move us to join the heavenly host in singing of your kingdom come. Join your heavenly host with full hearts. We join those who have gone before us in living the faith like shepherds going to share the good news. Like magi who travel far in search of you. 
We pray for Jane's friend, Mary. Bring healing to her body. Use as physicians and nurses around her to bring her to Shalom. And we pray for Caroline's friend, Heather, that the surgery is successful and restore her to health. We give thanks to you, O God, for Kennedy and Reagan, for healthy babies. Give thanks for family in town and with the Perrys that they had time with their family and traveling mercies for Darwin. We pray for this church family that in this new year we follow you with the vigor, the passion of the Magi. That we do not give up hope ever that we continue to look to a light that is shining brightly and march towards it. For those uh, who are grieving, we pray you comfort. For those who are struggling with addictions, give them strength. Give strength to those who come alongside them. For those who are sick, Bring healing for those who are lost in despair. Whisper assurances that they belong to you, that they are enough. In the silence, hear the meditations of our hearts our laments, our confessions, and our thanksgivings. Your grace abounds, O God. Reshape us in your image. Renew us with your spirit that we might repair the breaches of the world. We stand before you in boldness and humility for we know that your love is steadfast and your mercy everlasting. Our confidence rests not in ourselves but in you alone who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Siblings in Christ, let us respond to the good news, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of the Christ child, with our tithes and offerings.
with the gifts so rare that they chose to bring. Did you see how they bowed as they praised him aloud at his birth? Did you hear how the choirs of angels sang at the glory of the sight? Did you hear? How the bells of heaven rang all through the night. Did you know, did you know it was God's own Son, the salvation of the world begun? Did you know it was love that was sent from above to the earth? Did you know it was love that was sent from above to the earth? year we got into a wrestling match at the end on this song as to yes so uh 
thankful again for you. I, uh, I figured out how to use a singing bowl recently. And uh, when I was thinking about the, uh, the snaps, uh, talking about consistently, it seems the tonal sound of the bowl that does not wane, that once it's begun, it just continues to fill the space. And uh, so too, thinking then of uh, the organ that's filled with the wind, and once that wind has entered in, it continues to fill the space. That's the spirit that has filled your life. It is this constant. So feel surrounded, I pray. Feel surrounded with the God who is a God with us, who is transcendent and imminent, holding you, loving you. Let's go tell other people. Let's go share that very, very good news. Go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and be at peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Amen.